Welcome back everyone, I'm Kipley's Games, this is EVE Online, and I left you halfway through the introductory tutorial. We had started off our graduation by being exploded and thrown out of a destroyed space station, then we got ourselves a little ship, got that patched up by a fleet, then we got warped into combat, learnt the fundamentals of combat, and we also learned at the very end that we're immortal and we died and what we see here we are in our escape pod and we're just about to click next and see what happens next so let's carry on shall we well all right we're being given a new ship this is not just in the tutorial you get a new rookie ship every time you dock at a station where you have no other ship they're free they're infinite they're better than an escape pod but not by very much I will enable your station services panel so that you may board the ship provided to you by air. So you see another UI element. This is the station panel. This is what you see every time you're in a station. Try not to blow this one up so quickly. But if you do, you can acquire a new corvette at any station. Yeah, any time you don't have any other ship, or any time you want a free ship, you can just click this button and spawn one of these. Your next adventure will hopefully prove less explosive. We have a lead on who attacked the cloning facility, and we want you to follow up on it. Considering your recent experience, you're the perfect pilot for the job. I've sent you a module that will help you on the next leg of your journey. This is an Ibis. This is the Caldari rookie ship. It comes fully equipped with a couple of modules. As you can see in the back, there's a couple of things already fitted to it. And you get one of these every time, every single time you click board my Corvette. So they're given out for free, so you can imagine they're not very good. Captain, you can access objects currently stored at the station at which you are docked from your item hanger. What we have here is the Neocom menu. This is the essentially the main menu. This is the little icon. This is pretty much all that anyone will ever see of you other than your ship, which is why I said character creation means nothing. All these various icons do various different things. There are many, many more icons than what we see here. But at the moment, we're being told to open our inventory. Or orange bars means there is something that we need to pay attention to. We need to pay attention to any of this nonsense at the moment. This is the one we need, inventory. Now, let's take a look at the module Miss Calatrix has given us. And we're being invited to have a look at the item hangar location. A mining laser upgrade. A curious choice, Miss Calatrix. How will a mining module help our investigation? One of our agents in the field has intercepted a strange signal at one of our mining sites, but we're having trouble locating its source. We want you to investigate the signal, but if we're being watched, and I suspect we are, we don't want anyone to know we're on to them. You'll look just like another member of the mining fleet. Duly noted, Miss Calatrix. Captain, you can fit the module to your ship by accessing the fitting window from the Neocom. One thing I'm going to do before opening the fitting window is to hold shift and then left click the item hanger to open it in a separate window. And I'm going to put that down here. The item hanger is items you have in this exact station. So I'd like to have that here so i know that everything i have in this station is here and i'm going to do the same with the ship hanger i'm going to hold shift and left click it open it in a separate window and as you can imagine this shows you all the ships that we have in this exact station so at the moment we know we have this in the inventory of the station and this ship in this station and this inventory will just leave as the ship inventory as we see there's nothing in the ship's cargo this is the way i like to have things laid out you can get around this by using the inventory tree, but it becomes a bit confusing, especially when you've got lots of different inventories. I like to have them all out in separate windows. But anyway, let's do what we're told and open the fitting window. Let's fit your new module in a free slot. Okay, this is the model of our ship. These are the modules which are already fitted to it. A one mega newton civilian afterburner, a little baby civilian mining laser, and a little baby civilian Gatling railgun, which is a weapon. As we see, there is one empty mid power slot and two empty low power slots. So if we mouse over the mining laser upgrade one, above the number one, 
is an icon this tells you which module slot it can go in and as it has a one it will only fit in a low power slot so we click and hold it and either drag it into the center of the model in which case it will automatically go into any free slot which is available or we can tell it exactly which slot we want by dragging it into that slot so we'll just drag and drop here now bring the module online usually modules will automatically bring themselves online but this is a, an extra stage in the tutorial which is going to take us through skills so we'll try and left click it and bring it online it appears you do not currently possess the skill necessary to use this module Hardly surprising. You still have much to learn. Please direct your attention to the icon on the display that I have highlighted for you. There's these warning icons. This yellow one says we have an offline module, but we know about that. You and it's saying we don't have the skills. Here. So we can just mouse over it and click add to training queue, which will put the skill we need to unlock this into the training queue. And apparently it's going to take one hour and seven minutes to do that. Now, access the skill window from the Neocon. But never fear, there are ways around that. So this is the skills icon that's directly below your character sheet. Skills are essential for all capsuleers in New Eden, as they serve as the primary measurement of one's growth. A more highly skilled pilot will be most formidable indeed. Now, I don't usually like it to take up the whole screen because it's a little bit difficult to see so I'm going to mouse over this and click floating to make it slightly smaller and so I can drag it around. Training a new skill takes time as the neural pathways of your brain are rewired. The complexity of this rewiring can be measured through skill points. You have enough unallocated skill points to train the required skill. Do so now. So as we see, this has changed from 1 hour 6, 7 minutes to 1 hour 6 minutes because when you have skills in your training queue, they will automatically generate and then automatically allocate skill points to the skill which is in the queue. Each skill will need a different number of skill points to reach the next level and that of course determines the time. So mining upgrades level 1 will only take 1 hour 6 minutes, mining upgrades level 2 will take longer than that and each level will take progressively higher and higher number of skill points meaning it will take longer and longer for it to be done. You can earn these unallocated skill points through a number of means, quite a lot of them actually. There are various things you can do for rewards like events and logging in every day you'll just get given skill points for doing that and achieving some other things and what you can do with these you can just apply them to every skill in the skill queue at once. We do only have one skill in the skill queue at the moment. We've been given 1000 unallocated points. So we'll click apply skill points. Now, all you have to do is confirm that you wish to use those skill points. So as we see, we are about to apply 963 skill points to train this skill. Why 963 and not 1000? Because we only need 963 to finish everything in our queue and we will retain the 37 left over. Since it's going to save us 1 hour and 4 minutes, so we'll just click confirm. The training required for your new module is complete. Your skill queue is now empty. And there we are. We still have 43 unallocated skill points and nothing in the training queue. I should point out that you can train skills while doing other things. It's a good strategy to always have something training. I guarantee other capsuleers will be doing just that. We wouldn't want you to fall behind your peers, would we? She is quite correct. Your training queue keeps ticking down even when you have logged off. So you can rack up like a week or so or however many you want and it will just keep running forever. Very nice. To that end, I've sent the air skill plan to your AI. Normally, you would have received it as part of your capsular training program starter package, but your training was violently disrupted, to say the least. These skill plans are groups of skills which can be all automatically sent to your training queue with a single click instead of you having to manually add each skill level. Miss Calatrix's advice is sound. You should always have a skill in training. Let's start with this new one. And may it be the first of many. Now she, she wants us to just click start training, but I'm going to explain what this is. So we'll, we'll 
Quick show scale plan content. This is all the skills which are part of this scale plan, which is only repair systems level 1 and repair systems level 2. As we see, repair systems level 1 only takes 17 minutes, repair systems level 2 will take 1 hour and 18 minutes. These do not run concurrently, repair systems 1 will be done first and then level 2 will be done after it, and when you add 17 minutes and 1 hour 18 minutes, we get 1 hour 35, which is the duration of the entire skill plan. These milestones are optional things that you can add to a skill plan, it just lets the person using the skill plan and know what gets unlocked by the skill plan. As we see a module, we will unlock the ability to use a small armor repairer one. So we will just click start training and both of these skills will automatically come over here in the training queue. The more skills you acquire, like the stronger that. you'll be. As you continue to grow as a capsuleer, you can adjust your skill acquisition to achieve your desired goals. As you see, it's ticking down. This one will be done first, and then this one will be done after that. Now, close the windows crowding your screen. I it think I'm going to spend... If you fail to see a threat hurtling right towards us because of an untidy display. Before we close the window, I'm just going to spend our 43 unallocated points to speed this along a little bit more. So we'll just apply skill points. It's going to save us three minutes, but, you know, why not? We got them for free. So we'll close this and close this. Let us online your mining laser upgrade. Now that you have the necessary skill to use it, you can do this from the fitting window. Yes, back to the fitting window. Turn the module online. And when we turn this online, we will suddenly see that it consumes quite a lot of CPU. Well done, Captain. Just like that. You can now close the fitting window. So we're now ready to go. Looks like you're ready to roll, Captain. Our agent will rendezvous with you at the mining site. Keep your eyes open and watch your six. This is New Eden, after all. You never know what danger is lurking around the next Stargate. Okay, and as we see in the skills icon, the white icon is the entire skill plan progress, and the blue one inside it is the current skill progress. So that's quite cool. So let's click next and carry on. Miss Calatrix is right. Time is of the essence. I suspect something nefarious might be occurring at the air mining site. Undock from the station so we can begin our journey there. Okay, let's just click undock and get moving. Captain, I have run several scenarios that could explain the mystery signal air discovered at the mining site. According to my calculations, the probability that the situation is unrelated to the attack on the cloning facility is exceptionally small. One in 37 million to be exact. Let us make haste and walk to the site immediately. Hey, what we see here on overview are players because we're actually properly in the game now. So these are also brand new players in a variety of different ships. And we're being told to click this, which will take us to the location of our mission. So let's do that. Warp drive active. And here we are. That wasn't too long a journey. scale of Air's mining operation is rather impressive for such a young corporation. They must be remarkably well funded. It is little wonder that Miss Calatrix would suspect espionage. Further speculation will have to wait. We're being hailed by that orca. You must be the fresh meat Vesper told me to expect. Elias Pelton's a name, mining's a game. But you're not just here to mine, are you? No, we're gathering intelligence. We're here to assist in any way we can with locating the source of the unusual signal you've intercepted. Unusual is one way of putting it. Pain in my ass is another. The signal's bouncing around these asteroids like a fetto hopped up on a bad booster. Can't get a lock on its source with all these rocks in the way. Miss Calatrix has outfitted us with a mining laser upgrade. 
That should clear several of those rocks away. Good old Vesper, always ten steps ahead. Now, let's put that bad boy to use. As we see, now on the overview we have different tabs. And these will show us different things. All will show us everything. Warp 2 is like things you can warp out to if we need to. And mining is the one we need to concentrate on. Blend in is by getting your hands dirty with the crew. Some miners fly solo, but a project this big isn't exactly a one-man show. Sometimes the only way to get shit done is with a fleet. I bet this is the first time you mined with a crew. No offense or anything, you've just got that shiny new pod smell on you. Follow my lead and you'll be mining like a pro in no time. Let's start with that asteroid over there. As we see, the rest of the fleet is zapping this rock, so... We're going to left click if on it. competence matches your confidence, we are in good hands indeed, Mr. And approach it. Turn the afterburner on Please so we get there sometime call me today. Mr. Pelton and makes me feel like an old man. My old man, specifically. Miserable son of a bitch. Just about spat in my face when I left his crusty old Caldari corp to make my own way. Sincerest apologies, Elias. Our first name basis shall commence immediately. Good. I like to keep things informal here, it keeps morale up. This crew's full of people like me, following the siren song of sweet, sweet independence. Doesn't hurt that the money's good, too. Captain, we're now within range of the asteroid. We should stop here. And you can either click this tiny icon or just use the control space hotkey to stop the ship. Here we are. You ready to rock? Get it? Rock? Just a sprinkle of mining humor for you. Lock onto that asteroid, Captain. You mine asteroids the same way that you kill enemy ships. You target lock them and fire a laser at them. Now so, is the time target to lock. activate your miner module, Captain. And the activate the, activity, the mining module. The known as a mining cycle will impact the amount of ore you collect. For now, I recommend allowing the module to run in full cycles to obtain the highest yield possible. So if we mouse over the civilian miner, at the bottom it says one cubic meter per 10 seconds, which is the length of the mining cycle. If we only let it run for five seconds and turned it off, we would get half a cubic meter. So as she says, the length of your mining cycle depends on how much you get. But for now, we're just gonna let it run. Play your cards right and that giant hunk of rock becomes a giant pile of riches. Zapping the ore and sucking it up. Rocks, as Elias puts it, in your cargo hold. It's actually ore, not rocks. But I assume Elias is resorting to basic linguistic wordplay, a very human tendency. So again, we're being invited to click our inventory and check on what it we've got. Not look like much, but that's not just a pile of ore. It's a pile of possibilities. You can sell it, refine it, trade it. The choice is yours. Now, time to quit ogling your inventory. This asteroid's almost dry. Harvesting there it goes. resources is one of the best ways to earn money in New Eden. And if you're gonna make it as a capsuleer, the one thing you gotta know is that money is king. Hell, with enough isk, you'll be able to buy yourself a sweet ride like that venture over there. That's one down. And now, on to the next. I don't know why he says if you save up money, you'll be able to afford to buy a venture because the career agents give you two of them for free so don't waste your cash follow me captain and stick close this asteroid field can be a bitch to navigate i'm not going to orbit an asteroid i'm going to approach it all right what we have here is a station and players can build place operate and earn taxes from these if other players use the services which you put on them which is pretty cool. This is indeed a mining station. It doesn't mine the rocks themselves. It blows off huge chunks from moons and then explodes these chunks into rocks, which you then mine as we're doing. All right, we're close enough. We'll just target lock it. Once we get within 10 kilometers, which is the range of our civilian miner. Just like that last asteroid. There we go. Looks like you're a natural at this. Keep it up, and Vesper will be offering you my job soon. Elias, are there any words of wisdom you find particularly valuable for new miners? Oh, man. Where to start? 
First off, you gotta know the difference between raw ore and refined minerals. What we're doing right now is mining ore in its raw state. For someone just learning the ropes, selling that ore is the quickest way to make isk. But you can also reprocess ore into minerals. Take Tritanium, for example. You can't find that stuff in the wild. You've gotta get your hands on some raw ore, like feldspar, and then refine it into Tritanium. You can sell those minerals or use them to build your own ships or equipment. You can find refineries at most stations. Experienced miners get way more efficient yields from their ore. So that's something you can work towards. He wasn't the wrong. Is depleted. Another asteroid successfully depleted. The signal strength is increasing. I've isolated the direction of the signals. We better close in on that rock then. Mining belts do not usually look this cool. This is a very special one for the new player experience. But yeah, these stations are kind of the scale that EVE Online works in. We can eventually own and build and control and earn taxes from a station that big. And in fact, EVE Online goes much bigger than that. You can control entire star systems and entire clusters of star systems. It's a rather large game. Right, we're close enough to target lock, so we'll just do that. And once again, once we get within 10 kilometers, we'll come to a halt and start mining it with our little mining laser. The and the rest of the fleet will help us as well. Location. Let's stop the ship here. You can break this baby apart using your civilian miner. Yes, I know how to mine. I've just done it twice. Thank just you. Just like that. We can whittle away at this asteroid without damaging whatever's broadcasting that signal. Mining's pretty chill. You don't want mining to be exciting. If mining is exciting, then you're usually in trouble. Obviously, as we are only a little baby ship with a little baby laser, we're basically mining nothing. Skill training completed. Hey, one of our skills in the skill plan is completed. As you can imagine, other mining ships get significantly better yields than us. I think we just found what we're looking for. The signal source appears to be that wrecked frigate. This particular model is a Dramiel. Most notably, it bears a striking resemblance to the ships that attacked the cloning facility. Let's prepare to take a closer look. Okay, yeah, they want us to go back to the general overview tab, so we'll do the that. The fact that the wreck is isolated leads me to believe that the Dramiel was sent to this location to serve as a scout ship. Hey, yeah, so they want us to select it. Well, we're not going to get any solid answers all the way over here. Let's move in. Hey, wreck icons don't always look like this. It has a little square inside it because there is loot inside it. If the loot was empty, that square would be hollow. It's white because it belongs to us. When we get close enough, we can click open cargo and take whatever cargo is in the wreck on board our own ship. The signal is strongest in the vicinity of the Dramiel's cargo hold. Okay, left click, open cargo. I do love the feeling of striking gold. Go and grab whatever it is. So we can either click loot all to grab everything which is in here, or if we had our inventory open, we could click and drag it into there. But because there's only one thing, we'll just click loot all. It appears to be a black box, a device designed to survive the destruction of the vessel carrying it. Such boxes can be used to record vital flight data, but also to store valuable items. That's nice and all, but can you open it? Negative, Elias. Captain, the box is protected by multiple layers of encryption. While it's theoretically possible to hack into such a container, you will need significantly more training in that skill before attempting such a feat. Don't think it's safe to crack it open here anyway. Where there's smoke, there's fire. One scout ship might mean they got friends lurking nearby. If we could trace that signal, so could someone else. Better get the box and whatever's in it back to Vesper. She'll know what to do. 
Hey, now we're being asked to left click on this station icon. This little blue house icon lets us know this is our home station. Home station refers to one specific thing and that is a location of your respawn point. So each and every time our escape pod gets killed, that is a station we shall wake up in. Elias is correct, Captain. The box may contain the answers we need to discover why those unidentified ships attacked the cloning facility. And why one was spying on this mining site. Now usually you wouldn't just align to it, we could just click dock which will automatically warp us to the station and then dock us in it, but it wants us to align to it for some reason. And align just means fly very slowly towards it. I think this is what the game can do another fleet warp. Yeah. I don't want you out there alone. I'll send some of my best pilots back with you. Safety in numbers and all that. That is indeed what the game was doing. Another Life fleet war. Well armed company will be most welcome. I do what I can. If someone went to the trouble of protecting whatever's in that box, it must be something valuable. Well, I bet whoever sent that scout ship will be real salty that we got our hands on it. Stay sharp, Captain. Let's dock at the station. I'm certain Vespa is more than eager to see what we've found. Okay, and then click dock. And we shall dock. Welcome back, Captain. Elias tells me you've brought a gift. Indeed. Indeed we have, Miss Calatrix. And this gift comes wrapped in several layers of complex encryption. I'll pass that box along to our expert hackers. If they can't crack it open, no one can. Thank you for finding it. Air is once again in your debt. Elias also informs me that you're carrying a fair amount of ore. We can take that off your hands in exchange for some isk. Mind if I take a look? In order to sell the ore, you must first transfer it from the cargo hold to your item hanger. Yeah, this is where the nested inventory gets a little bit annoying. So I'm just going to click and drag it over here because all items have to be sold from a station's item hanger so that whoever bought it can come and pick it up. If you were selling something from your ship's cargo, you could then undock and obviously no one would be able to pick up the item. So we'll just drag it here. Select the ore to see what you can do with it. So we'll right click. Select the ore to see what you can do with it. I'm doing it. Right click and she wants us to sell this item. In this instance, we want to sell it to Miss Calatrix. Now you can't actually choose who you want to sell it to. As we see, we have 114 quantity being sold at 250 each, which will be 28,500, minus some sales tax of 8% because we have no skills to reduce that. So we will get 26,220 ISK, which is space bucks. Nearly done. All that's left is to confirm the sale by selecting the appropriate button. Yeah, confirmation panels pop up quite frequently and sometimes they are quite important. This one's not quite so important. That's a nice haul you've got there. I've transferred the ISK to your wallet. I think you'll find I've been more than generous. And I would be invited to take a look at the wallet. In your wallet, you can view the total balance of ISK in your possession. If you go to overview and make the wallet a lot larger, it should not be this small by default. Okay, in the last 30 days, we have made 0.33 million, and the breakdown is 90% of that came from agent and emission rewards, 8.5% of that came from trade, and that must have been the ore we sold. And apparently we got 5,000 isk from a miscellaneous source. So if you have a look at transactions, this is all the stuff we've just done. Your recent market transactions will show you how much ISK you acquired by selling the ore. Yeah, the inheritance. We got 5,000 ISK um, when we died, so that was quite nice. The highlighted entry shows how much money you received from air in exchange for the ore. Yes, but it does not show us the taxes, though, does it? Transactions shows Whenever us the tax. Whenever an item is sold in New Eden, a tax is applied to that sale. The market entry displays your most recent transaction tax. There we are, we've been given 300,000 ISK in agent rewards for completing each stage of the tutorial. 
and this is the corporation tax because we are in a starter rookie corporation corporations are what this game calls guilds we get taxed at 11 percent of that so it's good to get out of an npc corporation as soon as you can and join a player guild once you've finished gazing at your newfound riches close your wallet and inventory we turned our attention to a more pressing issue the mysterious box we discovered at the mining site no we would dive into this box but they haven't actually made that part of the tutorial yet so this is the end of the tutorial close the wallet and the inventory okay captain I trust you'll keep quiet about the wrecked scout ship. So long as whoever was spying on us hasn't realized we found it, Air will have the upper hand. And we've just been given more money for some reason. Ah, another agent mission reward with another 11% tax. Jolly good. As good as they are, it'll take some time for my team to hack through the encryptions on the box. You might as well use this time to explore what New Eden has to offer. Have you checked out the agency yet? It's the best way to find things to do. The agency is your one-stop shop for player versus environment activities. Even though EVE Online is pretty much marketed as a PvP game, PvP loses money and PvE is how you make money, so the agency is all about that. Miss Calatrix is right, Captain. In the agency, you'll be able to peruse a variety of activities, many of which will help you grow as a capsuleer. Indeed. If mining tickled your fancy, as the saying goes, you might be interested in viewing the agency's dedicated resource harvesting section. So we'll just click on a tab we're being invited to look at. As you can see, there are a variety of options available to you. If you enjoyed your time mining with Elias, you might find asteroid belts and ore anomalies worthy of pursuit. And now we're being told to have a look in agents and missions. Elias spoke highly of your knack for mining, almost as highly as Balin did of your prowess in combat. It's clear you've got potential, Captain. I can put you in touch with a few people who can help you grow that potential into something great. You can find them in the Agency, under Career Agents. These are the advanced tutorials which we're being directly pointed towards. I suggest you take a moment to familiarize yourself with what each Career Agent has to offer. They specialize in various forms of combat, industry, and exploration. Missions provided by career agents offer a variety of rewards, including new skills, ships, modules, and money in the form of ISK, making them both lucrative and educational. She is not wrong. Okay. Enforcer is player versus environment combat. Producer is building stuff. Explorer is finding stuff, including hacking into boxes. Soldier of Fortune is ostensibly kind of sort of the PvP agent. And Entrepreneur is basically the trade guy, but I don't like the Entrepreneur thing. No matter what path you choose, you will find a career agent who can help you walk it. You can even explore multiple paths if you wish. Once you've chosen an agent, set your destination. Now luckily, all five of these agents live in exactly the same station, so it doesn't matter which one we pick. And as she said, you should probably run through all five of them, and that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of this little mini-series. So I think we'll start with Enforcer, because it's pretty good fun. Just click on Set Destination. Now let's close the agency. There is one last question I would like to ask. Miss Calatrix. Have there been any developments in the investigation since we last spoke? Our investigation is still in the early stages, but I have two theories. The attack may have been motivated by simple greed. Air has no shortage of competitors. Some would kill to acquire our groundbreaking technology, literally. A more worrying possibility is that someone is trying to stop us from pursuing our research. While Air takes pride in disrupting the corporate tech scene, there are those who think we push the limits of innovation too far. The technology suppression laws in New Eden are draconian, if you ask me. Here's hoping this mystery box has the answers we need. Once my team has cracked it open, I'll be in touch. And we'll be waiting for a very, very long time because they have not made that part of the tutorial yet. Much appreciated, Miss Calatrix. I await any and all updates with bated breath. Metaphorically speaking, of course, I don't breathe. 
Oh, the witty banter. Captain, when you're ready, we can undock and begin the next phase of our journey. I do wonder how you'll die next. I suppose that is what ancient philosophers called morbid curiosity. Okay, now we're undocking and flying off to see the career agents who are not in this star system. Now that no one is actively trying to kill us, I will teach you how to navigate in space. The primary mode of interstellar travel through New Eden is via stargates. We will proceed to our destination through these stargates. First, select the destination I've highlighted in your overview. Okay, in the top left, as we saw in the agency panel, we had to go three star jumps over. So this is where we are in Kisogo, and we're going to Uitra, and our next destination will be Erlen, and then Unpass, and then Uitra. So this is the route we're passing through. These blue numbers saying 1.0, 0.9 and 0.9 is the system security level. That determines how fast the comps will show up to attack anyone that's attacking you. The Empire's space is patrolled by the Concord Bureau. They punish any illegal aggression. And one important thing is to note that I said punish. They do not save you from illegal aggression, they punish your aggressors. So your aggressors, if they're fast enough, can kill you before the cops show up and kill them. But the cops will kill them if it was illegal aggression. So before anyone decides to shoot at us, let's just select this Stargate, which has been highlighted in yellow because it is marked on our autopilot route. Stargates are also called jump gates because of the way ships seem to jump between distant locations. Now, initiate jumping to your destination. And we just click jump. This will warp us to the Stargate and After jump us through it automatically. To New Eden, it's nice to be in space without the threat of imminent peril. Though this is New Eden, peril often approaches when you least expect it. And this is our first Stargate. And this will shoot us through a miniature wormhole to the next star, which is this one. This blue line in space is our actual route through space. Some of the stars in the background are not background at all. They are the actual physical locations. Initiate jump sequence. As we see, the next stargate in the chain along our route has been automatically selected for us in the selected item panel. This is how this is supposed to work. Sometimes it doesn't and you have to manually select the one that's marked in yellow. But luckily for us, it I has worked this time. Unsettle you, Captain. You've already proven yourself capable in battle. I'm certain you can handle whatever New Eden throws your way. And if you cannot, at least you are immortal. You can be reborn into a new clone body to try again. I believe this is what humans call optimism. And these other icons here are some of these player-made stations which I told you about. This is indeed very much like the one we saw in the mining site. Yeah, just one jump away from where we began the game, there's some of these player-owned stations. One more jump to go. Initiate jump sequence. Oh According to archaeological findings, New Eden was first settled by humans over 15,000 years ago. Life must have been very difficult for those early settlers. Carbon-based life forms are stunningly fragile. With the right pressure, a human's vertebrae will snap like a twig. Time to land, Captain. Initiate docking sequence. Okay, this is the station we're going to. And we'll just click dock this time. These red and green pings which appear are part of this sensor overlay. We don't need that at the moment. So you can press Control O and turn them off. And away they go. That should really be turned off by default. Very nearly there. And then we'll wrap up this new player experience video. 
skill training completed. To contact a career agent, you must first access the agency. It seems that we have automatically had our entire air capture the air program trained for us because we still had over an hour to go and all of a sudden as soon as we docked it's gone. So the very last thing we're going to do is to double click on this enforcer agent which will open his dialogue and f properly finish the aura tutorial. Your choice of career agent will not limit you in any way. You can choose to work with multiple agents but let's focus on just one for now. To begin the next phase of what I'm sure will be an illustrious career, accept a mission. And we will accept that mission at the start of the next episode. We've completed the new player experience and in the next episodes we're going to be doing all five of the career agent advanced tutorials. So I hope to see you again for that and I hope you look after yourself until then. I will talk to you again very soon.